Hello, everyone. My name is Yuval, and along with Chris, Anea, and our two external mentors, JP Nachnias and Fred Litt, we are Team Fetish Footwear. Fetish Footwear is trying to tackle the problem of creating the world's most sustainable, stylish shoe company. And this is our technical update. Shoes are one of the most ubiquitous inventions that people have ever created. They allow us to travel farther and faster than ever before. And if you've ever seen someone's shoes, you know that they tell a story. People really love their shoes, so much so that in the US, the average person at, by the age of 20 owns at least 10 pairs of shoes or more at a given time. They also tend to buy between one and two new pairs of shoes per year, sometimes throwing them out and sometimes just letting them build up. This creates a ton of waste. On average, the United States disposes of at least 300 million pairs of shoes per year. These shoes are made of many different components, which makes them really hard to recycle. The uppers are typically made of something like leather, while the insoles are made of some sort of foam or synthetic material. The midsole is usually made of rubber or foam, and the bottom sole is made of rubber. Now that we've discussed the problem, we're gonna take a look at our solution. What if I told you that you could have a new pair of shoes whenever you want, that not only saves money, but also is way better for the environment. Our shoes let you swap out the color whenever you want and even replace worn out components. Because if something's broken, why would you throw it out? You should fix it. Our main design utilizes a T-slot inside the sole. Here you can see a cross section of some different designs we've been working with. One of the issues we've been trying to solve is how do we keep the seam between the upper and the sole consistent? We are currently down to our final two designs, one of them utilizing a lip which firmly grasps the upper and the other uses a mechanism which looks like a Christmas tree. It's designed to be a snap fit mechanism. We are currently trying to enter and combine two different market spaces. The first is the sustainability market. Currently, Allbirds dominates this market with their wool runners. They try to use the minimum amount of materials, which are all supposed to be sustainably sourced. The uppers are made of wool and the, bottom, and the soles are made of bio-based TPU. However, their shoes are not recyclable. Adidas, on the other hand, is trying to target the recyclability part of it. Their shoes are made of a, a recycled plastic from the ocean. There are, the other market that we're trying to enter is the market of shoes that can come apart. Currently. There's one company in Taiwan called Rudis, which utilizes a zipper mechanism. Another company is American-based OneSole, which is actually a Shark Tank product, aimed at developing women's shoes which have replaceable tops. Lastly, there's a company called ACBC, which is out of Germany. They also utilize a zipper mechanism. However, having so many materials on the upper means that they're very difficult to recycle. Our next step was to take a look at what patents currently exist on the market. As it turns out, there's quite a few patents for shoes which can come apart. However, there are none that utilize our T-slot mechanism, which gave us some confidence. We filed our provisional patent application and hope to pursue a full patent. With our idea ready to go, we then wanted to do some market research to see what kind of shoes sell the best and figure out how we were gonna design ours. Based on tons of research, we determined that the age group we're targeting between the ages of 18 and 26 tend to buy shoes which are comfortable everyday wearers, sneaker type shoes which allow them to do just about anything. Moving on, we'll talk about the design of the shoe, namely the connection mechanism ideas we came up with, as well as the aesthetic design of the shoe. We each started the design process by coming up with 15 connection mechanism ideas each. These were ideas that could be as outlandish or as conventional as we wanted, from glue to screws to straps and Velcro. We reviewed each other's designs and narrowed down our favorites based on feasibility, ease of connection, how strong we thought they'd be, and how easy they'd be to make. We also chose designs that we'd hope would be simplest in terms of material requirements to allow for easier manufacturability and recyclability. We ultimately decided to run with connection mechanisms that involve three parts, an upper, insole, and sole. An upper made of cloth or leather and other auxiliary materials uh, with holes on the bottom is what the user wears around their feet. The bottom of the sole is split into two parts, an insole which is in direct contact with the user's foot and a sole which is in direct contact with the ground. 
The shoe is assembled by inserting the insole into the upper and then connecting the entire assembly via connection mechanism, which will be discussed momentarily. Moving on to our most up-to-date connection mechanism designs, the images outlined in red here depict the two initial prototypes that we focused on. The top image is of an interference fit design, and the bottom two images are of a design that sandwiches the upper in between the top side flap here highlighted in yellow and the sole to keep the shoe together. The design in the middle outlined in green shows our quote unquote slide through design, which uses an insole with a rail highlighted in red to anchor itself in the sole section highlighted in blue. The insole is inserted into the upper and the assembly is slid into the sole. Ultimately, we found that a combination of sliding rail and interference fit designs would work best. The design on the right outlined in blue combines both designs by utilizing the slide through mechanism to anchor the parts together and using the extrusions to seal the seam between the upper and sole from dirt and debris. Since most people care about the way their shoe looks and since appearance will be one of the biggest selling points of the shoe, the aesthetic of the shoe is extremely important. We wanted to reach as wide of an audience as possible and appeal to different genders, occupations, and ages. We started with some hand sketches of shoes based on research we did in the market, taking some of the world's most popular casual shoes and blending the styles that we thought worked best. We also worked with an artist named Kyle Feliciano, who provided some of these initial sketches of shoe designs based on images of existing popular shoes. After many iterations, we made some development in finding the ideal intersection between sporty, comfortable, and casual. We sketched up and rendered a majority of our shoe concept designs in Procreate and rendered a 3D model of the shoe in Blender. Our final working design is shown here, which we believe to be a great combination of comfortable looking, stylish shoes that a wide range of consumers would like to own. Obviously, we're not shoe experts, and we wanted to make sure we were approaching the problem as well as quick as possible and in the right way. So we bought a series of books and resources about making shoes and starting your own shoe company. Wade Motawi here on the left wrote these books, and after reading through them, we got in contact with him, and he shared some great advice with us. He's been in the shoe industry for 25 years and offered us a lot of great insight on design, manufacturing, the proper way to start a shoe company, and much more. Now we'll move on to some of the prototyping and manufacturing we've completed so far. So unsurprisingly, maybe prototyping and manufacturing has been the most time consuming yet the most important part of this process. We all got our own materials, printers, sewing tools, and machines and worked on making these shoes a reality. We started with scaled down versions of the shoes, progressing into full scale models that would fit our feet, we printed out shoe last to help us with creating uppers and experimented with different materials and products such as Velcro and have been through over about 10 different connection mechanisms so far. We bought our own 3D printers to print out prototype soles and have been using hand sewn uppers along with old pairs of shoes to construct full shoe prototypes. We've been printing almost exclusively with TPU or flexible printer filaments of different shore hardnesses with different infills to most closely mimic a real pair of shoes. As you can see, we tested a lot of different shapes, sizes, and style of connection mechanisms. The main goal of this project is to start a business selling shoes. And in order to sell a lot of shoes, we need to make a lot of shoes. So we've started the search for companies that can manufacture our shoes on a large scale. We reached out to a company named Protolabs in Minnesota that provides rapid manufacturing of low volume custom parts for prototyping and short run production. They provided us with feedback to improve our designs for injection molding. However, we plan to reach out to companies specializing in shoe manufacturing who have more extensive capabilities than Proto Labs. Hi everyone. I'll start by describing our provisional patent application process and the steps we took to file our PPA. The first step in getting our intellectual property protected was to talk to some actual patent attorneys and experts in the field. Our mentors from Maroon and Gold, Fred and JP, connected us with Tal Kadem, Cooper alum and current patent attorney. We also spoke with rancher and patent attorney, Alan Wolf. They provided some much needed guidance on covering the most important aspects of our design, avoiding prior art, and navigating the logistics of the process. After weeks of deliberation, drawing, editing, some suggestions from Professor Lima, and reading through the entirety of patent yourself, we filed our provisional patent application together. We ultimately filed our PPA with the USPTO a few weeks ago. Here's the first page on the left of the official PPA we submitted, and next to it, the standard provisional patent application cover sheet, where we had to outline biographical information and some information about our invention and the application itself. Technical drawings with clear labels and descriptions are important to the entire patent process, as Rancher Wolf has been cluing us all in on. In total, we had over 25 pages of labeled technical drawings, just like you see on the screen, and five pages of specification documents where we talked about each of these drawings in detail. 
The most important components to emphasize were parts of the connection mechanism, the different iterations, and especially the ways in which our invention is better than prior art. Testing is also obviously a very important part of this entire endeavor. If we can't prove that our shoes are safe and that they work, no one will buy them. As such, we've conducted a ton of materials testing already. Here you can see that we've printed different pucks of TPU in, with varying infill densities and shore A hardnesses in order to test the strength of the material. We've also printed out several different versions of small and full scale connection mechanisms to test out the strength of the connection. Finally, we've developed a few actual shoe prototypes using Converse and Adidas uppers in tandem with our sole and insole connection mechanism. Pictures here are after some use specifically with the Adidas prototypes and with some testing of typical flexures of the foot in the Converse prototype. We plan to develop testing metrics and conditions for success and failure with research and info from experts like Wade. Finally, we can't hope to start a shoe business without talking about our business plan and our branding. Branding and coming up with our business plan has been particularly challenging. None of us are artists and none of us have our MBAs. We've gone through a few different company names, ideas, logos, branding packages, and business plans. Drawing inspiration from other shoe companies, lifestyle brands, and we also tried to make sure the company's image aligned with our product. We ultimately have landed a branding we're particularly happy with and would love feedback on. This is our current branding and logo and shoe aesthetic design. We wanted to make sure that the logo was playful and that we can use a small part of it to identify us on the tongue and heel of the shoe. We also wanted to make sure that our shoes were seemingly brandless, but still super recognizable. So if you can see, we integrated an F into each side profile of the shoe to subtly brand it without taking up too much room. This will ultimately give us the flexibility to have an unlimited number of designs and still have our branding stand out loud and clear. Also on the bottom of this slide, you can see our two most recent prototypes, where you see two different connection mechanisms used with Adidas, with an Adidas upper and with a Converse upper. These are ultimately what we plan to run with, no pun intended, and we hope to get some more testing in wearing the shoes and walking around with them. Thank you all for your attention. Huge thanks to our m and mentors, JP and Fred, patent attorney, Tal Kadem, rancher, Alan Wolf, Mr. Wade Motawi, and professors Dell, Lima, and Luckenberg for all the help and support. Also, huge thanks to m and for the incredible grant and SolidWorks for providing us with professional licenses. Thank you all, and we're open to your questions.